For more than a decade, Will Ferrell has been the go-to guy for blockbuster comedies like Anchorman, Elf, Talladega Nights. But his latest movie, Everything Must Go, is very different, and so is his character. And joining us right now, Mr. Ferrell, good to see you this morning. Good to see you, Chris. Stranger Than Fiction was definitely a, a different turn for you from what people expect from you. But this, I mean, this is down that line of a very different kind of movie. Explain for the folks at home. Explain what kind of role this was. Yeah, this is, um, you know, uh, definitely a, a unique thing for me to get to do. Uh, it, it's basically the story of a guy who's, uh, you know, finds out in one day that he's he's fired from his job after 13, 15 years. Um, comes home, finds out his wife has left him, uh, he's locked out of his house, and all of his personal possessions are thrown on, on his front lawn. And, uh, uh, and basically, his life is turned upside down, and, and instead of kind of fleeing the situation, he decides to essentially live on his front lawn. Fully embrace it. Yes, and uh, and in the process of that, he has he, he has an, a yard sale, that's the title, Everything Must Go, and, yeah. and kind of figures out his life in the process. What was it about this role, though, that, that kind of attracted you to this? Because this is, I mean, this was shot in 10 days, it was all done in Arizona, no special effects or anything. Right, well, right. This is very basic. Yeah, I haven't done a, a, a ton of independent movies, uh, so I was, I was attracted, uh, I was attracted to that. I thought it was such a unique uh, premise and uh, and it was it was a, a, an opportunity for me to get to, to do something uh, very real. It's a real you know yeah. it's a, it's a character that's uh, extremely relatable to uh, to everyone. A lot yeah. of people you know it's funny because I went into to watching this movie not really knowing what was it about and what it was about rather and there was times where I wanted to laugh but I wasn't sure if I should laugh and then I did yeah. laugh and I'm like oh maybe I feel yeah. I feel guilty for laughing but there are some moments that are just organically funny in the movie. Yeah, not I, laugh out loud hysterics but. You can see the humor. It's a it's a very uh, a, a very subtle comedy. At the at the same time, it's it's uh, you know there's a lot of dramatic moments, and 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 that's what I love about it. It's a, just a it's just a real story, and and like real life, there's yeah. times when you cry and times when you laugh, and it it kind of encompasses all that. You strike up this great relationship with one of the neighborhood kids. We've got a clip I want to show you real quick. We'll take a look at it. And we'll talk after the uh, after we see it. You might want to come work for me. What kind of work? Make some signs. Maybe sell a couple things. What are you offering? Discussing salary and responsibility up front. Smart, very smart. I'm thinking four bucks an hour, okay? If I have to leave, you stay here, watch my stuff, act tough. I'll feed you, I'll give you bathroom and cigarette breaks as required by state law. I don't smoke. Good. <laughs> that's some of that, that humor that's built in there. Yeah. And that, that young man, he talked about doing a nice job, and I didn't realize till after the fact that was the, you know, the, the rapper, uh, Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G. That's his, his son, Christopher. Yes, right uh, uh, C.J. Wallace. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had to audition a bunch of kids uh, for that part, and uh, he's kind of, he's the neighborhood kid who doesn't have anything to do and kind of befriends me, and uh, he's... He's an excellent actor yeah. and, and did such a great job. Do you have a newfound appreciation for Pabst Blue Ribbon? I don't think there was a scene I can remember where you didn't I, have one in your hand. I, I drink a fair amount of PBR <laughs> in the film, uh, and it's it's a terrible beer. <laughs> it, is, it is not good, but you know what? It lends itself to this it character. And perfect. what you're going through yeah. it was probably the, the perfect brand. Um, has a family. I know the, uh, the kids are, are growing up day by day. Yeah, everyone's good. Uh, we've got... Magnus is seven, Matthias is four, and yeah. Axel is 15 months old. So. Do they do they have a, an understanding of what you do for a living? I mean, are you? Uh, the the oldest one finally revealed to me that he he said, I I, I know what you do. You're in movies. <laughs> is is and, he and impressed? I said, are, are you okay with that? And he's like, Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. <laughs> So I, I, I guess that's approval. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people, especially in, in our line of work, because Anchorman's probably one of the most quoted movies of anybody that's in the news business. Right. So we constantly wonder, will there be a sequel? There's rumors that there will be, then there's, and then it's off the table. What, you what's know, the good word there? It's, uh, we are trying to achieve that. Yes, we're trying to get that done. You have so. to. Fingers crossed. There's a whole new generation of news anchors out yes. there, both male and female, whole... coming into the business. They need they need something to look up to. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's been good to see you here this okay. morning. Okay. Thank too. you very much for everything.